Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. One of the rewarding things about turning bowls from green wood is when you finally turn and finish the bowl. This one I rough turned two and a half years ago. And at that point it weighed, according to my little cheat sheet here, 910 grams. It promptly lost about 40% of its weight to 540 grams in about five months. Then it didn't lose much more over the next two years. Now I have a little bit more connection with this bowl, this apricot bowl, because from the same tree is the one that cold conked me uh, when I was turning a piece of crotch. Now that's the piece that convinced me that even though I was wearing a face shield at the time, that I should always wear a face shield when I turn the lathe on. So whenever the lathe is running and I'm turning, even though it's a spindle or bowl, I'm wearing my face shield. Now it doesn't, shouldn't take a conk in the middle of the forehead to convince anybody of that. I thought I was invincible. That proved that I wasn't. So wear your face shield, turn your green wood, and enjoy turning. Let's turn it. This bowl warped in a typical pattern. It is somewhat oblong now with raised peaks at the end grain. The first thing I thought to do is to flatten the top on the sanding disc. This enables it to sit flat against a chuck or faceplate. This bowl is almost too big to flatten on a 12 inch sander. Then as I went to the lathe, I realized the bowl fit just over my chuck. With this close fit, I could have skipped sanding the rim. Oh well, not all is lost, at least the rim is more even. I'll center it with the tailstock. Now to turn the exterior. I'm starting with a medium bowl gouge. I'll switch to a skew to reform the tenon to make it round again. The rough bowl is quite chunky. I want to flatten the outside curve for a better flow. The tenon is way too long to use as a base as is. I'm remounting the bowl to the chuck with the tenon as quickly as possible. Before flipping it around, there's way too much variation to do any final cuts. Now that it is stable, I'll shape the exterior a little more with some shear scraping. The exterior is looking Pretty good now. Now for the interior. I'll start with a gouge and even out the rim. I'd rather do this first so I can have a good entry surface to re-hollow the interior. Then I'm going for the interior. This goes well. The apricot is hard, but my gouge is sharp. Hollowing is a series of cuts to reduce the wall thickness and shape the interior. There are some small hairline cracks in the end grain lip area from the drying process. I'm treating these with some thin CA glue before I go on. Now I'm switching to scraping, first with a round nose scraper for the interior. This apricot is looking really nice. Now just a little more to clean up the exterior. The CA glue got a little sloppy. I'm using a skew as a scraper on the convex surface and a round nose scraper on the little bit just below the lip. To finish the base, I've mounted the bowl to my homemade coal jaws. I'm carefully cutting back the original tenon with a gouge. Then I'm switching to scrapers to refine the base. After a bit more sanding, I can remove it and apply a mineral oil and wax finish. By the way, the finished bowl weight is 161 grams, a loss of another 40% of the original weight. And my apricot bowl was finished. Apricot sure is a pretty wood. I'm glad I finally bit the bullet and finished the bowl. I left it for two and a half years to dry, which is far from immediate gratification. I've seen a lot of bowl turners with stacks and stacks of bone dry rough bowls. 
If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield. Don't wait to have a chunk of wood convince you. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.